Ancient Aliens author and explorer Hugh Newman joins us today. Hugh is regularly featured on Gaia's Ancient Civilizations, and this exclusive interview is a very special part of our ongoing coverage of the Awakening, UFO, and Conscious Life Expo in Blackpool. This is Europe's premier consciousness event, and it goes far beyond the nuts and bolts of ufology. We're delving deep into our multidimensionality, I'm Kristen Gillespie, your conscious investigative reporter, and this is in affiliation with Zohar Entertainment and Gaia. You want to subscribe to Gaia using the links below, guys. This is your database of everything spiritual designed to upgrade your vibration, and uh, it's absolutely given me a PhD in consciousness, so you don't want to miss out on that Gaia experience. Uh, also, I wanted to say that the, there is uh, information below in the description box about how you actually book your tickets to the Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo. Just go to ticketquarter.co.uk. So here we are with Hugh Newman. I'm so very grateful, Hugh, for this feature interview today. So give me the latest on the Nephilim giants of Stonehenge and Gobekli Tepe and that connection. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on here yeah so basically i'm the author with jim Vieira of the giants of stonehenge and ancient britain it's a book that we published recently and uh, in that we go into 250 accounts of giant skeletons bones teeth skulls found all across the british isles including ireland scotland wales england and all the, all the islands around it and we kind of uncovered this whole kind of missing chapter of human history here in the British Isles. But also found connections and legends, and DNA um, connections as well with other cultures. Um, one of these was Turkey or Anatolia, um, going towards the area of the Bible lands. Specifically, you know, we have the famous sites of Gebekli Tepe, and more recently, Karahan Tepe, that have been kind of discovered there over the last few years. And these are rewriting human history because they go back like nearly 12,000 years. And so what we found in the British Isles is that we found all these skeletons, bones and, and legends associated with these giants. But even the ones near Stonehenge are really interesting because Stonehenge's original name was actually the Giant's Dance. It wasn't Stonehenge, that was a later Saxon name. And there are legends that go way, way back, hundreds if not thousands of years, that talk about these giants, even like biblical giants, links with the Canaanites of the Bible lands. Saint Christopher, who was a giant, who was who an effigy of him has been paraded around the nearest town to Stone in Salisbury since the 1400s. And so we have all these odd connections, and now there's evidence in the kind of genetic record that inhabitants from Turkey actually made their way over to Britain. You know, over the last seven or eight thousand years and so there's really interesting connections especially now these sites have been discovered in that part of the world hmm, that's absolutely fascinating and i love the reference you made between stonehenge and the giants what was that again well there's lots of there's lots of connections the main one is that in a in a book called the history of the kings of britain written by jeffrey of monmouth in the 1100s he wrote about this legend of these, well, it was kind of almost like a fact, it was written factually that giants from Africa, the furthest reaches of Africa, bought stones from there to Ireland and they built a site uh, which was then called the Giant's Dance in Ireland at a place called Killaroos. Thousands of years later, King Ambrosius summoned his army and Merlin, the magician, to bring the stones over from Ireland to Britain, to Salisbury Plain in honour of the fallen dead that had lost a battle or been slain in a battle. And the army couldn't move a stone, so Merlin used his magic to do so. And so it became known as the Giant's Dance. And this was actually written about 200 years before this as well. And also the earliest ever depiction of Stonehenge is of a giant lifting one of the lintels into place and Merlin and King Ambrosius in it as well, which goes back to the 12th century. Also, there's been like 
skeletons found in this area. I mean, we, we've got one from 1719 that was re reported of a nine foot four inch skeleton found in a mound or a burial mound called the Giant's Grave, just south of um, Stonehenge near Salisbury. In the 1500s, early 1500s, we have well-known scholar um, Thomas Elliot reporting on a 14 foot 10 inch skeleton found uh, just south of Salisbury as well in the Stonehenge Greater Landscape, which had this strange kind of book with this uh, uh, undecipherable writing on it and this big metal disc with this, these inscriptions that no one could read. But I suggest that these were probably Canaanite, so sort of from the Bible lands, because there, there were known connections now between these two great ancient civilizations. Fascinating connections there to Merlin, to St. Christopher, and Stonehenge is just an interesting place in general. I've had my best ever UFO sighting there, personally, with photographic evidence to prove it. In terms of ley lines and geomancy, what's really going on at Stonehenge? Stonehenge is, firstly, it's unique. You know, it's like there's nothing like it in Britain. There's a thousand or more stone circles in Britain, but this one is utterly different it's got lintels the stones have been shaped and carved there's legends of giants as i've mentioned there's one of the strangest stories actually of, uh, goes back to 1666 in a book called a uh, fool's bow soon shot at stonehenge which is written by this 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 reverend um back in the 1600s and he claimed that giants built that after winning a battle, you know, as a trophy to their victory. And that they they had this technique of somehow being able to soften the stones, turn the stones to powder, and then recreate them in the shapes they wanted. And so you got this story, and they, they used engines and, and kind of machines to do this, apparently. So this is really odd that they're talking about this. So this, there might be a hint as to how they were to actually create these stones, which is something that in recent times... Um, Joseph Davidovitz and the Geopolymer Institute believed many stone structures were built like this, like powdering it and reforming it. Um, so, yeah, and Stonehenge is remarkable for its geometry, its astronomy, its alignments. Um, there's kind of a whole shadow play going on through the annual cycle where the shadows uh, kind of represent different things and point to different stones, almost like a calendar or a clock. And also it's energetic. This place has been recorded um, by a gentleman called John Burke. He was, was a scientist and he recorded the electromagnetic uh, energies there and found that they were really strong there. And the energies would kind of come through the entrance, collecting the stones, almost spiral around. And, you know, there are even kind of talks of people having like kind of altered states in Stonehenge at certain times of year, certain times of the day when this energy peaks. And I think this was partly the purpose of these sites. And also I think it's, um, um, there's lots of, there has been other sightings, like you say, of UFOs, but also balls of light um, and strange phenomena there. Uh, there's, there's a story of people camping in the stones in the 70s and then vanishing and like lightning starts out of nowhere there's a friend of mine visited the site and she had this whole kind of fizzing energy around it and it kind of shook her you know but when she was it when she was in the stones and so yeah, there's all these different um different ways to approach and understand stonehenge but i think it's also about the experiential side of it as well and i think that's uh why many of these sites not only were said to be built by giants because these giants were sorcerers they were magicians they were kind of you know linked with merlin merlin was said to be the son of a giant female um and a kind of semi-divine being you know this is called the incubi um so there's all these kind of strange stories and it's said that the giants had had the technology and the magic and the kind of sorcery to be able to move these stones and manifest kind of magic around the stones even to the point where people who disturb you know giants graves or stonehenge or other megalithic sites in the modern era great storms and lightning and bad luck will happen like that as soon as they start desecrating these giants. Because a spell has been placed over them. Bringing magic to life here with Hugh Newman. 
And certainly Stonehenge is a megalithic site full of high multidimensionality. How does Stonehenge compare with the aforementioned Gobekli Tepe? Well, Gobekli Tepe is, is really interesting. Well, Stonehenge is around 3000 BC, maybe a little bit older, a little bit younger. But Gobekli Tepe and now Karahan Tepe near Shandlofa in southeast Turkey is they're nearly 12,000 years old. You know, Gobekli Tepe is um, 11,600 years old. Karahan's about 11,000 11, years old. So they're, they're really much older than Stonehenge. But they're arranged in geometric circles, much like we find in the British Isles. Um, I, I, I'm going to announce this. I'm going to present this at the conference. So I found these very strange geometric connections that proves, I think, that the geometries found in all the stone circles of Britain originated in ancient Turkey at these sites. And it may have even, it may even back up the stories of the Book of Enoch and the story of the Sumerian traditions of the Anunnaki, where they were said these great gods, these semi-divine beings who arrived on Mount Hermon, flourished, created civilization. But they also, the stories about them measuring the earth and going to all these different latitudes. And with the, the new research that I've kind of done, I'm convinced that this gives some clout to the book of Enoch, these old people have always wondered, you know, is this just a fairy tale? This book of Enoch, is it something else? Is there some truth in it? And I think now with the discoveries in Southeast Turkey and with the alignments, the measurements and the kind of geodesy, which is like the laying out of sites. And also the fact that the stories talk about, you know, the people from the Southeast Turkey area going to these higher latitudes, possibly Britain, possibly even Stonehenge. Some of the descriptions in the Book of Enoch almost talk about Stonehenge. It's really odd. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm looking, uh, I'm going to be looking at all that kind of stuff. But yeah, the sites in Gebekli Tepe are a bit different. They're constructed of these T-shaped pillars, which are up to 20 feet tall, with beautiful 3D relief carvings on them. There's beautiful artifacts. There's acoustic properties at the sites. There's um, even magnetic anomalies I've been recording at the sites. There's astronomical alignments. All these things are what are talked about in the Book of Enoch and about the Anunnaki. They're said to be these great teachers, builders, astronomers, surveyors, and other such things. But we also find exactly the same principles in the stone circles of ancient Britain. So I suggest very strongly that there's an influence coming from that part of the world over to Great Britain. I find that sacred geometrical discovery so incredibly fascinating, and I can't wait to hear more about that. And that ties in directly with Billy Carson's presentation on the Anunnaki and the legendary Eric von Daniken, who's talking about the gods of the skies. So, wow, this is an ancient civilizations kind of masterclass here. You guys definitely don't want to miss it. Definitely sign up now for the Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo and also do your preliminary research by clicking on the link below to Gaia. And um, Hugh, I just wanted to kind of finish off with what's the number one takeaway we're going to get from your presentation that maybe people have never heard before? Well, I'm not going to give too much away here, but uh, basically uh, there's, uh, I think people don't realize the, the fact, well, there's, there's a few things, really, but the fact is that there were tribes, races of giants living on the planet, and these may have been from the Bible lands. You know, this is something, obviously, you mentioned Billy and Eric might talk about, but this is in Britain as well, and no one's really done the research. There's only one person really has done the research in Britain. This is a gentleman called Anthony Roberts. He was a brilliant guy. He died in 1990. Um, and but we found hundreds of accounts here, and like, and to me, it's just a realization that what we're being taught in um, history books, in colleges, and everything else doesn't give you the full story, it only gives you a fraction of it, and much of it is sort of shoved, you know, pushed under the carpet. So that side of it is really interesting. But now there's these connections with the Bible land, with Gebekli Tepe proving what may have been written in some of these ancient texts the, the evidence is now emerging 
is to me a huge revelation and i think people are going to be quite surprised um when they see all these connections which i'm going to you know, hopefully uh, which i'm going to present at the conference you know newman it's a total game changer seriously and where can people find you and your incredible research yeah, sure. Well, they can just Google Hugh Newman and they can uh, f- uh, megalithomania.co.uk or the Megalithomania UK U- YouTube channel as well. So um, we've got tons of videos, it's like 950 videos up there. We've got lectures about the Begley Tepe, Stonehenge, everything else. And um, yeah, so uh, they can they can find me there. All right. Awesome. You knew me, guys. You don't want to miss the Awakening UFO and Conscious Life Expo in Blackpool. I'm Kristen Gillespie, your conscious investigative reporter, and I am always humbly in service to humanity and all sentient beings. Signing off for now, Hugh, we'll catch you at the event. Okay. See you later.